Welcome back. In the video today, I'm going to be going over how to replace the nozzle on the Prusa XL. The Prusa website says that these nozzles are hot swappable, which to me means that it should be fairly easy to do, fairly quick to do, so let's see. I do like to follow the directions at least the first time and see if there's anything that needs to be adjusted. The only tool that's needed that's not included with the Prusa XL is the brass brush. And then the included tools is the TX8 Torx key, the included two wrenches, and the screwdriver. And then of course the new nozzle in whatever size that you're wanting to swap it to. This is how the new nozzles look. And it also says to have a filament box or something to protect the bed. We've got all the tools together, so let's get started. After removing the filament out of the hot end, you manually adjust the tool head to be on the front and the center. Next is cleaning the current nozzle, so it suggests to preheat and then wait five minutes. I did have the littlest bit that it kind of purged as it was preheating, and I go ahead and brush it. I don't really notice a huge difference. I haven't, you know, had a lot of issues with oozing on this nozzle, but I wanted to go ahead and follow the directions. In the future, if it does not look like it needs to be cleaned, I'm not going to take the time for this because then you have to wait for it to cool down. Set the box to protect the heat bed is the next step. Next is disconnecting the hot end. This cover flips up pretty easily once you get the hang of it. There are no screws or anything to remove. There are two cables that need to be unplugged and they do have a little safety latch on both of them. But this was pretty simple. Nowhere in the instructions did I see it say to turn the machine off, but of course, as soon as you unhook cables, it's going to notice and give you an error message. With the constant beeping, I just go ahead and turn it off, and maybe I missed this somewhere in the instructions. Next is to remove the cover. The instructions keep calling this the X carriage, but in my mind, this is the hot end or the extruder or the tool head. Then you use the Torx key, or in my mind, the Allen wrench, to just unscrew. There, there is a screw in there that you just do a couple of turns to loosen. You don't completely remove the screw. At this point, the hot end will slip right out. You do have to do this somewhat gently because those cables do have connectors on the end and you don't want those to catch. So you kind of have to push those through one at a time. The opening is not very large. And I see that I probably could have cleaned this a little better. It doesn't look the best, but it's out. When I read through the directions, the next step is to go ahead and remove the nozzle from the hot end. It made me wonder about maybe getting another hot end to have it ready to go, but this really didn't take very long. It does seem odd to me to be working on the hot end with it cold. I feel like usually when I'm swapping nozzles, I'm so careful to not touch anything, and so it just feels very odd to have it in your hands and not burning you. But I didn't feel like I needed excessive force. It seems to unscrew pretty easily. The threads on this new nozzle are much longer though than I expected. I finally get the nozzle out. I'm swapping the stock 0.6 nozzle for a 0.4 nozzle, and this is before I ran the speed test where I was racing all of the Prusas to see which one would print the fastest Benchy. So this one is a 0.4 nozzle that I swapped it to. After I've got it hand tightened, I go ahead back with the wrench and make sure that it's just a little bit tighter. It does say not to use excessive force, so I am careful here. These wrenches make me wonder what the other sides are for, if it's for maybe the adapters that it would fit as well. Okay, so the nozzle has been swapped and now we can put it back in. This is the view from below so you can see the space that you're working with that you do have to get those cables into. I feed the cables back through the same way with the longer cable first to get those connectors through the space. I messed with this a little bit trying to get it to completely fit in there until I realized that you have to turn the heater block at about a 45 and you can actually 
you feel it slide in correctly. Then I just get this as snug as possible and you just tighten it back up by using that Allen, Allen wrench or the Torx key. It kind of feels like I'm missing something at this point just because it's done, it's simple. Then you reconnect the cables the upper cable is for the hot end heater and the lower one is for the hot end thermistor. I make sure to secure them until I hear them both snap. And put the cover back down. Remove the Allen wrench and the box that was not needed and then snap the cover back on. Now I turn the machine back on, wait for it to load up, and then go back and preheat and make sure that it does start to heat up. And no error messages or anything else pop up. Everything checks out okay. The longest time that I spent on changing out this nozzle was in trying to clean the nozzle. So preheating, waiting for that, and then waiting for it to cool down again. Um, I was able to change out the nozzle on the MK3 and the Mini during this time. Because of that, I would say it takes longer, but next time I'm probably not going to spend the time to preheat and go through the cleaning, and I think it'll be much quicker. Let me know your thoughts on this new process for swapping out nozzles. Thanks for watching.